And when I have very specific problems and very specific questions, I find a video or a research or I take a course or something where I'm like, okay, I have this problem and I need to solve it. Power to Live More with Joe Dodds. Welcome to the Power to Live More podcast, all about productivity, organization, well being, energy, and resilience. I'm Jo Dodds and I started this show to enable interesting people to share their stories about how they use their power to live more and by that I mean to do the stuff that they want to do more than the stuff that they need to or should do. It's about creating a life for yourself where you have the energy, health and space to be happy and fulfilled, spending your time as you'd like, whether that be at work, home or somewhere else entirely. That's your choice. Hello, my name is Ellie Dodds and I'm co-presenter and today Jo is interviewing... Paul Tokuzolu. Paul approached Joe to come on the podcast, having found us via our website. He has an interesting and fascinating podcast of his own, and Joe is really happy to be speaking with him. Paul Tokuzolu hosts the Beyond Homo Sa- Sapien, Sapien. Sapien podcast about human evolution. The show dives into exploring emerging technology like AI, blockchain or virtual reality and explores how these technologies are developing at the same time as interest in spiritual awakening, psychic abilities, psychedelic substances and holistic living is spiking. Paul believes this co-evolution is modelling our species in something new. Paul is also involved in a project to use artificial intelligence to revolutionise the education education industry. His team is creating an automated platform to replace curriculums in schools. Paul enjoys helping folks with the with digital marketing. He loves Brazilian jiu-jitsu, hiking yoga and reading books about about philosophy, spirituality and personal development. Back to the studio. Today I'm interviewing Paul Tukuzolu of beyondhomosapien.com and we've been debating how you pronounce Homo sapien, <laughs> and I've learned how to pronounce your surname, I hope. So welcome, Paul. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. And you you nailed it. You crushed it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lovely. So really good to ha- have you on the show. And uh, I, I keep saying, keep reminding myself, it's a truly international show because we have people from all around the world that come on it, that comes on it, that comes on it. I can't even speak English now. You see, after all of that... <laughs> Debate, including me having to Google how to pronounce Homo sapiens. <laughs> Can't be interested in admitting that, but there you go. Uh, so tell us more about who you are, what you do, and where you do it. First of all, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And uh, so I started getting involved in digital marketing a little over two years ago, maybe about two and a half years ago. And it came as a result of being actually in the United States Army. And I'm I'm still in the Army. I'll be getting out here in the next like four months or so, kind of finishing up my time on the on the contract. And uh and it it happened because I realized very quickly, honestly, like pretty much as soon as I as soon as I joined that I didn't really want to do this whole nine to five job thing in general and uh Mm -hmm. that after i got out of the army i didn't want to have to go and get another job i was seeing what was happening i was a big fan of tim ferris and joe rogan and robert kiyosaki and kind of these these folks that you hear about when you kind of start to learn about the the entrepreneurial lifestyle so to speak and i was i was getting indoctrinated into the the entrepreneur system you know <laughs> of working online not having to go to work at a 9 to 5 job and i was opening up my mind to the idea that this was a possibility and i was thinking man like this is really what i got to do because this 9 to 5 job here is no good for me um I was having a lot of mental health issues actually at, at work and I was, it was just no good. It was no good. And I thought, man, I've really got to do something. I've got to get involved in developing a set of skills. So about mm-hmm. two and a half years ago, and here's the thing, I had, I had no skills. I studied philosophy in college. I joined the army. So I had, I had some army related skills, <laughs> but I had no <laughs> marketable skills for the digital age, you know? So but but I, I was into podcasts. I love listening to podcasts. 
I, I, I can talk, I have ideas, crazy ideas and, and things of that nature. Um, and I was, I'm really into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've been practicing Jiu Jitsu now for about eight years. So I said, okay, I can do a podcast about, and I started a podcast about Jiu Jitsu about two and a half years ago. Uh, called the Matrix Jiu Jitsu podcast, which you can still find on on YouTube, and uh, and I started to learn podcasting, and one thing kind of led to another, and I realized that uh, I was really getting into digital marketing. I thought that I was yeah. learning podcasting, but a as you know, there's all these things that you these all there's all these skills that you begin to develop around the art of podcasting. Like, you know, I was using social media to promote the show. I was doing a YouTube channel to promote the show. I was getting involved in learning how Instagram and Facebook work and, and all of this, all this stuff. And people started to reach out to me after about six months of me kind of experimenting on my own and just learning, you know, making a ton of mistakes on my own, my own work. People started to reach out to me and they said, hey, I really like what you're doing with your, your new brand. Would you like to work for us? Would you like to run our social media pages and things like that? And, I, and I, it clicked for me and I said, oh, I get it. I'm not going to be making money today from the podcast. I'm going to be making money from the skills that I developed from doing the podcast. Those yeah, are what people yeah. <laughs> are going to be that, that's what people want to pay me for. So mm -hmm. I got into social media management and social media marketing in general. And I began to form this like digital, this digital agency that I still operate today. And nowadays, two years later, I help clients with Facebook advertising, chatbot setup, uh, consulting strategy. I, I help them with website development and design, funnel, copywriting, and, and all of these kind of digital skills that I've been able to develop over the past few years. And uh, and of course, I now have a different show that I do because I kind of changed. Uh, I realized I had a lot more to talk about than just Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, even though I, I love Jiu Jitsu. Um, I realized I love doing Jiu Jitsu a bit more than I like pra uh, talking about it. And uh, <laughs> and uh, so I started the, the Beyond Homo Sapien podcast about six months ago to talk about the the evolution of the human species and kind of where this is all going. So I'm still doing the digital marketing. That's kind of my day to day, you know, what I, what I do for the world, but the podcast is kind of the, the, the long term, the long game, you know, over the next yeah, couple yeah. of years. Yes. Yeah. 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 And where are and you where doing this from? I'm in uh, right now I'm in Missouri in the United States. So I'm, I'm still, I'm again, I'm still in the army, although I'm kind of I'm in that period of the military where they're I, I'm kind of getting out. So they, I have a lot yeah. of a point. I don't have much of a job these days other than get my job is to successfully transition out of the military, yeah. uh, which yeah. is great because they give you some at least my the, where I work at. They give you some time to make that transition and make sure that you're all you know set up for the outside world. So, but I'm at Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri. Right. right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, we've got Ooh, a we've big got echo. Big echo. We, we didn't have, have it until so now. Oh no! <laughs> it's gone away now. Magic. Perfect. Magic. So yeah, so you're uh, in a bit of a transition, which is uh, interesting. Uh, great to hear that you've uh, started to really look towards not doing the nine to five, you know, lots of people spend a lot of their life doing that. And then, you know, finally work out a way to do something different or decide that they want, or perhaps they decide they don't want to do that early on, but they don't really find a, a solution to enable them to do anything else. So, so soon. So great to hear that, that that's happened. So tell us a bit more about the Beyond Homo Sapien podcast and, and about it's, it's fascinating when we were talking before we started recording about the the sort of topics that you're covering but the the sort of connection with the sort of scientific topics or what pe people would generally see as scientific with other areas which a lot of people wouldn't think were particularly scientific but I was saying a friend of mine has has been recently highlighting how so much of, of what she would term woo-woo stuff in in the past is now actually being 
proven through scientific means and things like quantum physics and all that sort of stuff and and you're touching on all of that stuff uh, as part of your podcast so talk us a bit through that so the show is like i said about human evolution but more specifically we analyze kind of artificial intelligence virtual reality blockchain and, and all these other emerging new technologies and we also analyze the law of attraction, developing psychic abilities. Uh, we even get into like psychedelic drugs and stuff like that, or holistic living, like different forms of meditation or people who are becoming uh, nomads, like digital nomad lifestyle kind of individuals, really just everything that's going on these days. And, and more importantly, how it's all connected, because that's really what I see going on is like you said, as we are developing in quantum theory and quantum physics, and again, obviously I'm not a professor of quantum physics by any stretch of the imagination, but the more that I learn, the more that I'm seeing how it's, it's heading towards validating a lot of the stuff, like you said, that's been termed kind of hippie woo woo, like the law of attraction, for example. Quantum yeah. theory is really getting into learning about, oh, at the very subatomic level, the, the, the thing that is at the very foundation of these atomic structures is some sort of a wavelength, some sort of a vibrating thing, some sort of a, yeah, like a, a wavelength essentially is what they're finding. And again, obviously I don't really know I'm not up to speed on the very cutting edge stuff. And I don't think anyone is because it's still a developing field. That's kind of the whole mm -hmm. point is that it, no one really knows what's going on. That's the, that's the issue. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. but the more than, and that's, and then if you cross reference that with what folks are saying in these kind of spiritual communities or even religions dating back thousands of years, like in Hinduism, Hindus have been teaching for thousands of years that the entire universe is what they call consciousness vibrating. And they say that everything that we experience here is some sort of a mult is some sort of a divine mind that we cannot even begin to fathom mm. and it's vibrating and that is mm. what reality is. And mm. so and now I'm not saying that that's true, but I'm saying like that is something that has been being taught for thousands and thousands of years and and nowadays in the 21st century we have people speculating like oh maybe like we have virtual reality coming out and we're saying maybe that's what's going on here maybe we live in a simulation maybe we live in something you know a video game of sorts and that's what's yes. happening here and in my opinion it's the same thing it's it's just back in the ancient days they didn't know about virtual reality <laughs> so the mm. ancient Hindus taught yeah it's consciousness vibrating and in today's world we're saying maybe it's a wavelength of some form or maybe it's a simulation maybe it's a a VR program of sort and it's like we're all just trying to use whatever language we have available to us to really try to get to the bottom of what's going on around here what is all this mm -hmm. stuff it seems to be some sort of a i don't know some sort of a vibrating world of some variety you know and and yeah, i feel like yeah. it's all coming together and i really do think that over the next few decades especially with just the amount of information that is available i mean look at what's happening here you are you and i are having this conversation across an oat from an ocean away from each other yeah, and yeah. And maybe we're maybe what we're talking about here is planning ideas in the minds of someone in India or Japan or or Pakistan or or South America or some you know all over the world, and then they get an idea and they talk about it with their friends, and those two come up with something new. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that's the power of what's going on here. Is I just feel like over the next few decades, we really are going to have some sort of answer to this question. And it's going to be absolutely, it's going to absolutely change everything we know about the world. Just mm -hmm. how, just how Newton changed everything or Galileo or Einstein changed everything that we knew about reality, essentially. And I think that that's where we're headed very yeah, soon. Yeah. So you so start to tell us a bit about, about why you do this, you do this because of wanting to, to do 95. 95. 
thing. thing. Um, but but also wanting to explore, as we've been discussing, uh, all of all of this sort of uh, seemingly. Uh, I don't know, incongruent stuff <laughs> that looks like it doesn't go together, but it seems to. And uh, I, I was talking yeah. with my family the other day, and I was just saying, when you start to think about all this stuff and the things that you've said about being in, you know, a big elaborate game, or uh, and one of the other theories is that we're all, that time is all happening at the same time, isn't it? That, that what yes. seems to be the past and what seems to be the future is all actually happening at the same time. I and, think about that all the time. <laughs> yeah, I like I hear all this stuff and then I think, oh, I'm just going to stop thinking about it now. It's all getting a bit too scary and complicated and everything else. Yeah. <laughs> um, so sort of knowing that and, and looking at the nine to five thing, starting your podcast, doing your digital marketing, and everything else. Wh why are you doing what you're doing now? You know, how, how is that um, developed and and, you know, how have you set things up so that when you do leave the military, this is going to be what you want to do? Um, you know, at the moment and, and for the, the foreseeable future. So I know that I said that I, I have a, I do digital marketing, but more specifically what my, what my company actually does is we do what's called business development, which is kind of a, uh, it's a, it's a very specific way to explain uh, many different things, if that makes sense. So in other words, what uh, tactically my company can offer is website design, building funnels, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, uh, search engine optimization, building websites, developing a chat bot, uh, getting clients on podcasts, doing setting up podcasts for people and, and all of these things. And I have a large network of people that I, that I work with and but but really what we do is we say we do business development which is we say hey we're going to work with you to develop to come up with a really creative and a strategic way to accomplish whatever goals your business is looking to to accomplish in order to grow and scale usually from like the six figure level to the seven figure level or something in that that ballpark mm -hmm. and we're going to come up with we're going to create a strategy using all of these different systems that we know how to do, and then we're going to actually implement it for you. And again, I have a big kind of team of people that I work with to make this happen. So how this relates to being in the nine to five is like, I obviously my time is limited. I'm doing a podcast. I do, you know, I do go to work <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> and, uh, and the podcast is, to insert, I do the show every single day, so it takes up a bit of my time wow. for sure. And, uh, <laughs> I and I have, yeah, it's great. And um, and I have uh, I have some other, and I have clients too that I that I help specifically with you know consulting or Facebook advertising. So I love doing it this way because what I do, my role in that business development agency is I'm the person who goes out and forges the relationships and the connections and the network. And I'm not, and then the actual work is usually done by people who I subcontract to. They, you know what I mean? They, yeah, we're yeah. kind of a network of, of independent contractors that all work together. So, uh, and that's kind of what I tell people, if you're looking to do a nine to five, if you're, if you have a nine to five job and you're looking to start a, a business, it's gonna be incredibly difficult to do it all yourself. And you're probably, unless of course you're doing like a very, very, very niche specific thing. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a larger organizations because that's what I'm passionate about is creating what will hopefully one day be a large organization. So to accomplish that goal, I need to involve a bunch of people that I know. So mm -hmm. for me, networking really is a key skill and really is kind of where I, I feel strong is in the forging of relationships and strategic partnerships and putting deals together between people. And, and that's really what gets me excited and passionate kind of on the, the business side of the house. And, uh, you know, so what I'm saying is like, it's something that I have the time to do. Whereas, mm -hmm. because what I'm getting paid to do is essentially to form these partnerships. And of course, every once in a while, I pop in and I help with a Facebook ad campaign or something that is my specific skill set. But oftentimes, mm -hmm. it's like I'm making this, I'm closing the deals, 
I'm making the sales, I'm forming the partnerships between people. And that's, you know, that's, I, I have the time for that. And then the, yeah. the actual yeah. contractor is the one who does the, you know, several hours of, of actual work. And I'm out there making new friends, having calls and stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, so you, yeah, you've so basically you've crafted it around your skills, your skills and what you want to do. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And and furthermore, and I'll tell this too for, for people who are trying to leave the nine to five life or or any or or even just people who have multiple businesses, is that like obviously usually if someone is leaving the nine to five life and trying to start a side business or something. It's usually because they don't enjoy their nine to five job for some reason. So they're usually spending most of their day, you know, or at least the first part of their day doing something that they don't necessarily like. So, yes. or something that is not in their, it's not their life purpose. It's not their passion necessarily. And that's okay. But if you are doing a business and you're also in your business doing a bunch of things that you don't really enjoy doing, maybe there's one part of the business that you really enjoy and the rest of it, you're like, man, this is, this is a grind, but I got to do it because I got to hustle. And Gary Vaynerchuk told me to grind and hustle and work 12 <laughs> hours a day and all this stuff. And it's like, no, like you're just going to get so burnt out if you're going to your nine to five job and you don't really like that. And then you're doing a bunch of stuff for your business and you also don't really like that. Like it's, yeah. it's way better. It might be a little less profitable for you like monetarily, but that's OK, because ultimately it will pay off in the end because you can do more of what you love. But mm -hmm. par partnering with other people is absolutely huge, especially if you have this nine to five lifestyle. Like uh, most of the stuff that I do would be just absolutely impossible if I didn't have business partners. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it would be yeah, completely yeah. impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you get done yeah, what you so get done then? So you outsource a lot of it. You have people who deliver the work and, and, and you, as you say, you do the bits that, that you are best at and that you want to do. But how do you get and, and how do you do a daily podcast? How do you make sure you can get everything <laughs> done every day? <laughs> Uh, a lot of software, a lot of very helpful software that makes my life easy. Um, and systems, just uh, just systems and routines make it easy. Like for example, if you were to come and see my, this and it's, it's the little stuff, it's in the details where mm -hmm. you save, where you save 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, five minutes here and stuff like that. And like, if you were to look at my Google Chrome, uh, bookmarks they are organized as hell and that's something i obsess about is yeah. my google chrome bookmarks and folders and everything has its own specific folder and all the folders have subfolders for everything that i use if basically like if i'm going to a website more than like twice i'm going to bookmark it and it's going to go in a very specific folder for a very specific thing. I have folders for like, you know, this is what I go to regularly. These are the sites that I go to a little less regularly, but they're still important. Yeah. Here's all my banking stuff in this folder. Here's all my credit card info, all my credit card portals in this folder. Here's PayPal, here's Stripe, here's all my software. And it's like, you get into, it takes a little while to kind of set up and manage, but it's absolutely worth it. So honestly, mm -hmm. that's, that's huge because just for every single website, I just, have such a it's such a pre-programmed in my mind now i can just be click 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 open this open that open this one and it's just very it saves me that again it saves me that like 10 minutes here five minutes there oh my god yeah. what was that website i forgot what it's called because now you're using extra brain space that you just don't need to do so that's huge just being really organized in kind of your different digital bookmarks and tabs yeah. and it's a little thing like that that really saves you some headaches um but then and I have some. Where, where, oh, sorry, just ahead. before we carry on, where did that come from? Is that something that just naturally came to you? Have you learned it from somewhere? Is it trial uh, and error? It actually came from I I, I, I was watching a uh, webinar. This was years uh, about a year and a half ago. I was watching a webinar on e-commerce because I was just trying to learn how what's the. This is when I was first getting started. I was mm -hmm. trying to learn like how does drop shipping work? Like what's the business model? And now I have an e-commerce store as well. And uh, we're doing pretty well this holiday season, which I'm stoked about. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, again, made possible by my business partners. And uh, I do the Facebook ad side of the house for that. But, uh, but long story short, I was watching a webinar and this guy was sharing his screen. 
And this guy's like a mall. It was a uh, Chris record. If anyone knows drop shipping, Chris record was sharing his screen. He's like a mega millionaire guru in the drop shipping space. Um, and he's made millions of dollars online. And yeah. I, and I was just watching and he was sharing his screen. And one of the things that I noticed was I was like, Oh my God, he has the most organized Google Chrome bookmark folders I've ever seen. And yeah. I was like, I, I need that. That is, that is, <laughs> that is gold right there. I got more, that was, that was more beneficial to me and more helpful than the actual information he was teaching was his, yeah. how organized and obsessed he obviously was with his Google Chrome bookmarks. Yeah, it's funny. I I um I had that happen to me, and I I think my I think mine was about bookmarks. Well, yeah. you know, I was I was running a webinar, and afterwards somebody, you know, made no comment at all about the content of the webinar. <laughs> it was all about how do you? Oh, I think it was because for a while I had my uh my uh bookmarks headed up by days of the week because I was theming them the days. Oh, great. And so it said, you know, Monday, admin, Tuesday, audience building, whatever. And yeah, that, that's the thing that somebody picked up at the end of a, of a webinar was not what I was teaching. <laughs> it was that yes. bit. <laughs> yes. So, and yeah, that's the thing. I, and, uh, I'm, a big fan of, I'm a big fan of Tim Ferriss and his views yes. on, on efficiency and stuff like that. And I have his book, uh, The 4-Hour Chef, where he talks about kind of the principles of learning and how to like learn quickly and how to just learn, basically, yes. how to book on how to learn effectively. And yeah. uh, one thing he talks about is, is this. He says, whenever you are watching someone or learning from someone or watching someone present or whatever, he said, the, the way to maximize your learning and to pick up on some real details is don't just listen to what they're teaching and what they're saying. Pay attention to those little things that they probably don't even realize they're doing. The mm -hmm. little hints where you're like, oh man, she has that so automated and it's so automatic for her that she's forgotten that she's even doing that. She doesn't mm -hmm. even know that that's, uh, uh, you know, that that little detail that you're probably not even aware that you're even doing. But me as the audience member, as the as the viewer of the presentation or, or whatever, I'm paying attention to like, oh, she's doing this and that. And probably it's beneath it's even it's so automated. It's such a, a habitual part of just who this person is that, that they, they, don't don't even, yeah, they yeah. don't even realize it. They don't even no. think to bring it up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's. I that's a little that's the little keys that I've picked up over the years is paying attention to those things. So thanks. Yeah, Tim absolutely. Ferris. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Tim Ferriss. I like him too. And and it's just I was in, interviewing somebody else for the show earlier, and I was saying the difference with with him, and it sounds like you as well, is that you don't just take that learning, you actually apply it, and you know you are aware of, of that. That's key, and that's another thing that I've taken from him. He has this principle of. Uh, studying just in time information versus mm. just in, just in case information that's another thing that's yes. huge Ooh, when you yes. have a nine to five job when you have a nine to five job or you're just a busy you know individual in general is never i never am reading or studying i mean every once in a while obviously if i find something really interesting i'll, I'll dive down the rabbit hole a little bit um, like lately I've been reading books on the Holy Grail because I just think it's interesting. <laughs> um, but uh, but but still, regardless, like I'm never just watching a webinar because I'm like, oh, this might be useful someday. No, no. it's like I'm I'm I, I have I take action on what I'm doing. And when I have very specific problems and very specific questions, I find a video or a research or I take a course or something where I'm like, okay, I have this problem and I need to solve it. So please content creator, help me out. You know, and I'm never yeah, just yeah. like, ah, well, you know, let's absorb these 10 webinars and books and see if I can store it and use it someday. And you know, like, <laughs> I mean, not, some, and again, again, there is a fine line because sometimes there's a new TED talk and it's like some groundbreaking information and you're like, oh my God, this is fascinating. And then you watch it and it's some new information that you, you know, totally makes you rethink your business and your life. So obviously there's room for, you know, if something catches your interest and you're like, like me in the Holy Grail. I'm like, yeah. man, this is, I don't know why, but I'm suddenly like really interested in this. And I'm like, hey, man, maybe I'll read a book and maybe I'll stumble on the Holy Grail and become a millionaire, you know, like who knows, <laughs> but uh, you know what I'm talking about. So it, yeah, it's a fine yeah, line yeah. for sure, but you get what I'm yeah. saying. 
Yeah, absolutely. I interrupted you when you were telling me about um, the sort of tools and apps and how you get stuff done. You you talked about your bookmarks and obviously. Oh, we, yeah. We sort of went I can nerd out on bookmarks around. all day. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but to do the show specifically, I, I use Zoom. I record mm -hmm. over Zoom. Um, and specifically, I have a, I have a um, enterprise account with Zoom where I have unlimited storage for recordings. And I also have the Zoom webinar add-on. Um, and my friend actually hooked me up. Uh, my friend, uh, his name is, oh my God, it's escaping me. Obviously not a very good friend, but his, <laughs> he has a Facebook group called Deal Vega, which is a really good one. Oh, Sylvania Harad, that's his name. I'm sorry, Sylvania. I had a, I had a presque vu moment where something's on the tip of your tongue. Sylvania Harad, he's the man. Um, he hooked me up with an enterprise account on Zoom. And uh, actually, let me talk a little, just a quick blurb about my friend Sylvania and his Facebook group, Deal Vago, because I think your audience will find value in this. He uh, actually, seriously, go to that Facebook group, Deal Vago, and join because his whole thing is he he works in the corporate world. He works for uh, uh, one of these gigantic tech companies, and he's like a, he's I think he's an executive at like a gigantic tech company. I forget mm -hmm. which one. And his whole thing is he finds uh, he finds like corporate level rates and he let and he gives it to small businesses. So the the sneaky deals that the large corporations are able to get on things like Zoom, uh, he finds ways he negotiates contracts and partnerships for uh, for entrepreneurs like you and me who run like small businesses. And then he gives us those deals. So oh, wow. yeah. yeah, yeah. So definitely look them up, Sylvania Harad, and I can send you a link uh, later on. But yes, really do. valuable yeah. resource. Uh, he mm -hmm. he gets like corporate rates for like Zapier and Zoom and uh, Kajabi and like all sorts of mm. big kind of bigger corporations in the tech. Yeah. You know, different ones of these different apps that are really useful. Um, but uh, anyway, but so I have Zoom enterprise account with there that he helped me, that he got me a sweet deal on. I pay like 25 bucks a month for that, thanks to him, uh, mm -hmm. which is super cheap because uh, yeah. the enterprise account is usually like a couple hundred a month or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's super legit. But uh, so I have that and then I have Restream, Restream.io, which is actually a software that people usually use for like video game live streaming for Twitch and these other platforms. And uh, what that does is it allows me to live stream the show to YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch simultaneously. So Ooh. as I'm recording the interview with the guest on Zoom, uh, and Zoom is recording, and I'm also using GarageBand to kind of back up in case Zoom fails, which it mm -hmm. never has, but just in case, <laughs> I have GarageBand going to kind of, you know, just as a secondary thing. Yeah. And then Restream is pushing the live stream to Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. And Zoom Zoom does live streaming as well, but you can only do one platform. And I'm trying to do uh, YouTube and Facebook simultaneously. And then Twitch is kind of just extra because it's, you know, they, they do that too. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Restream is great and it's really helpful. So that's how I get, um, I get the, the show on Facebook, on YouTube, and then I have a blog and that's where I do kind of the write up for the show. And I take the YouTube video that I got and I place that on the blog. And, um, and I have a keyword research tool called Keyword Finder. It's a kwfinder.com. That's how I do all my keyword research for my SEO to make sure that my videos in YouTube are titled correctly and that my, I'm writing blog posts that are keyword, you know, SEO friendly and stuff like yeah. that. So uh, that's another thing is like, usually I do the blog post beforehand. So if I'm getting ready for a show, like I have two shows that I'm doing later today. So what I'm gonna do is I'll write the two separate kind of blog posts, which are each probably like, you know, 500 to a thousand words, depending just on how I'm feeling that day, uh, how mm -hmm. much I have to say. And those those 500 to 1,000 words, I'll dive into the keyword research tool um, and I'll make sure I'm writing you know, stuff that people are actually searching for. And then I'll write that on my blog first. And that kind of preps my mind for the show itself because I've already kind of thought like, okay, what do I want to talk about with the guest and, and so on. And then yeah, I take yeah. that, and I, then I take whatever I wrote for the blog and I put that on my YouTube uh, live streaming portal which is what Restream uses. So I upload it, I, I put it there and I kind of, 
uh, prep my live streaming uh, pant portal on YouTube. Um, and I create my thumbnail for YouTube in Canva, canva.com, which is a wonderful tool. And I have the free version of that. Absolutely brilliant. And, um, and I get my photos from Pixabay, pixabay.com, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. And that's a free stock photo site that has uh, thousands and thousands of, sh of photos on there for free that you can use. So yeah, I grab yeah. my thumbnail photo from there. I put it in Canva. I add in some fancy words and I upload that to my blog as the blog thumbnail. And then also for the YouTube channel uh, thumbnail for the live, the live portal. And then, so now what I've gotten here, and I know I'm, I'm uh, talking a lot here, but what I've got now is I've got my YouTube video ready to go. I've done my keyword research. I've got my blog post ready to go. And now I'm ready for the show. And then whenever the guest hops on, I then I we record the show and it's live streaming to YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch simultaneously while we're talking. And then I go and I just take that YouTube video that was finished and I put that on the blog. I embed it on my blog post as a as an embedded YouTube video. And I use uh, I use WordPress for blog. I use uh, WordPress with Thrive Themes and uh, A2 Hosting does my hosting. And, uh, and yeah, and then that's it. And then I upload to uh, shout engine, shout engine .com yeah, yeah. for the podcast. And I know that was a lot. It might sound like a lot, but the thing is, is again, like I, I, I habituate it. I make it every day and it's a system. So in my head, I kind of go into autopilot because I've been doing it now for, you know, a couple months now, every single day. Mm -hmm. And for me, like, of course that, that did not all happen at once. I didn't like jump into this and think like, I'm going to do all three blog, YouTube, and podcast all at once. Like, no, not by any means. I started with doing the podcast and then I was like, okay, let's also do podcasts and YouTube for, and then I did that for a couple months and then I felt like, okay, time to do the blog. So I didn't just do it all in one week, but now that I've been doing it consistently, it just feels like second nature to me, honestly. And it's, it's, I knock it all out in like 45 minutes usually. Mm -hmm. I was, I was, um, chuckling a little bit on the basis that uh, uh, this is um, a system that, as you say, you can now do quickly and, and it makes it really easy. We've probably just blown the listeners' minds to the point of them thinking there's no way they're going to do a daily podcast. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, think, it's not that hard, um, but, to be honest. But you finished it well, you know, saying it's 45 minutes, you know, but it is about developing that process, isn't it, so that you're not reinventing really? the wheel all the time. And that's the thing too. And I, I want to just further emphasize and really like underline, like I did not start with all of that. I've been podcasting now for two and a half years. My first yeah. podcast that I did two and a half years ago was recorded on my phone uh, as I was on a road trip. Cause I was just like, I gotta start something. I gotta do this. And I yeah. recorded on my phone and I published it to, um, SoundCloud, which I would never recommend someone to do if they're starting a podcast, definitely use one of the real podcast hosting sites. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, nowadays I use I use Shout Engine because Shout Engine uh, is free and it doesn't limit your storage space. Uh, and I, I do a lot of shows, so I need that unlimited storage. Yeah. Um, but yes. that's again, it's a process. And I'll send you all these links that I've mentioned so you can put it in the show notes. Um, but yeah, again, like I did not do this overnight by any means, <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. And if someone is listening to this and they're like, man, podcasting sounds hard. Like, no, uh, again, it, podcasting, I love it actually, because it's so easy. And I tell people who are just getting started all the time, like really do a podcast because honestly, all you need, I just spelled out my like, you know, kind of professional level of doing this, but to get started, all you need is a garage band, uh, a half decent microphone, like a USB headset and a shout engine or one of these free hosting sites. And that's it, get, 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 get started, you know, <laughs> and just, just do it, just do it, it'll be easy. Um, I will say this though, I used to do a podcast once a week and it felt really difficult. I felt like a drain on my energy, it felt like uh, something I, I was worried about all week and not worried, but like I was anticipating it. I was thinking about that episode all the time. And after I was done, it was like, man, oh my gosh, like this huge energy crash. And once I started doing it every day, 
It was easy yeah, yeah. because now it's built into my routine. Whereas before yeah. it was felt like a disruption, a disturbance of my routine. And nowadays I'm like, no, it's just my day. I brush my teeth and I podcast, you know, and mm -hmm. drink water. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. It's, um, it's always about finding always about that, sort of, um, that sort of um, what gets in the way thing. thing. I, 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 my podcast, which is weekly, it was the um, uh, show notes that stopped me when I was first doing it. Yep. So that's what ended up with me procrastinating. Um, yep. And once I took that away, got somebody else to do that, that really helped. And uh, I'm just in the process of outsourcing a lot of the rest of it now because – it, you know, it is happening every week, but it, it's, as you say, it's really, it's, it's, I have to sort of gear up to do it each week. And actually it'd be just a lot easier if someone else did it for me. <laughs> I, no. I, this bit's the good bit. It's the rest of it I don't need to do. <laughs> me too, honestly. Like I, I, the show notes used to get me so, so, uh, uh, give me so much trouble. And, um, and here, and also I will say this just to add one more software that I'm, I have not used yet, but I'm about to in the new year, I'm gonna start doing uh, transcriptions, which I'm not doing now, I just kinda do like a show write up. But I wanna mm -hmm. do like what Tim Ferriss does and lots of people do is they have like the full transcription of the podcast episode. And I'm gonna use a software called otter.ai, otter like the animal, dot AI as in artificial intelligence. And I'll send you the links too, but uh, because that do, it does uh, transcriptions and you get like, you get like an hour uh, for free every month or something like that. An mm. hour of transcribing audio for free, which is a really good deal. So mm. yeah, but uh, okay. again, we're talking now, I'm talking now like the expert level stuff that 90% of your listeners don't need to <laughs> just get started, just get oh, started. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> start, like... Don't <laughs> so, worry. <laughs> so what about uh, keeping yourself sort of well and and full of energy for this because you you know you're doing a job you're doing a daily podcast you're you're you know running a business um you know ready to sort of transition full time into it it just you know how do you get it all done <laughs> how, how are you looking after yourself to make sure that it, that's you know that's an option <laughs> i will say well i uh so i'm i'm on the autism spectrum and that's something that I, that's kind of the reason why I realized very quickly I can't do the nine to five thing is I'm on the autism spectrum. I'm obviously a little bit higher functioning, although I've certainly had plenty of pretty low functioning moments in my life over the past few years. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know that I was on the autism spectrum when I kind of entered the nine to five workforce. Uh, like I kind of alluded to earlier, I was having lots of mental health issues like I was having panic attacks every day before I would go to work because mm -hmm. I was so overwhelmed and I'm I'm very sensitive to like noise and sound and uh, smell and all this kind of stuff and when I first joined the army um, I didn't know I mean obviously if I had been diagnosed I could never have gotten into the army I've been kind of diagnosed uh, over the last couple of months actually and uh, I finally got the actual diagnosis Mm -hmm. But I uh, but I didn't know I, I had no clue and um, you know what I mean so I what was I gonna say I was having panic attacks all the time and I was just totally overwhelmed um, one of the things about autism is you, it prevents you from feeling your emotions and the the way that it does that is kind of complicated it involves your vagus your vagal nerve system which is a part of your your nervous system that kind of is damaged if you are on the the autism spectrum but long story short basically prevented me from kind of feeling my emotions and feeling my uh my inner visceral feelings and when you're in that mm -hmm. state you are just in this state of overwhelm of panic of like fight or flight the whole time because your body gets kind of like shut down and uh and so yeah i was having panic attacks every day kind of because my whenever i was driving to work my body would react to like the trauma of that environment that I was experiencing. And it would be like, holy shit, don't go in that, don't go in that office. And uh, this was about like two years ago that I was suffering from, from this stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it was, it was crazy. And it, and it didn't get better until I really, really took it seriously and made it, made this like the top, priority to heal and to really get to the root of like 
what is going on, what are the problems, how can I fix it? Because I was seeing some therapists and I was starting to talk about what was going on. And the majority of the people that I saw were like, oh, get used to this. This is this is it. Like you're on the spectrum. There's there's no hope. You know, like this is you're gonna find you've gotta have to find ways to cope to, you know, get through this, to get through this life. And I was like, fuck that. Like, no, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> no I, I was like, that is not me. That is not my life. That will not be my future. And yeah, uh, yeah. so I was like, and I found a therapist who I'm still with today, two years later, who was like, yeah, we can, there's definitely things you can do. <laughs> you know, there's definitely ways to heal <laughs> and get yeah, better. Yeah. And uh, that's been great. And, um, but I focusing on the physical stuff was the key. I was doing all this crazy, like different forms of therapy and all these kind of mental things. I'm a big fan of that as well. Uh, and I think it's incredibly important for, for sure. But the thing that actually like was the key, the thing that made me feel my emotions. And, and I remember the day when my emotions came back online, when I could feel like everything that was happening in my body, I could feel like the sensations in my gut or in my chat, in my heart, you know, I could, I remember that where I was when that happened, you know, is that, yeah, that's yeah. significant for sure. Um, it was not just like a, it, it was very immediate where I was like, oh my God, wait a second, what's going on? You know, like it was, it was crazy. It was really profound and really, really powerful. And what worked was again, those physical things reducing. I, it made sense once I realized like, oh, my body is like literally in a state of shock in a state of constant panic. And it was overwhelmed by the physical sensations of the outside world and the internal world of what's going on inside. So I was so meditating every single day is huge for me like i meditate every single morning uh for at least like 15 to 20 minutes um i drink a ton of water like i drink like probably two to three gallons of water a day which for the europeans here would be probably like 10 liters <laughs> nine to ten wow. liters <laughs> of water a day um uh, so a lot of water and just that, that that was huge honestly drinking a ton of water is is huge um, I yeah, go for walk. Yeah. I go for like a walk every day. I go to the, like there's some woods behind my house, so I just go for like a 30 minute walk as often as I can and clear my head and breathe in the nice fresh air. Um, mm -hmm. And and when I'm at work uh, nowadays, and that's the other thing too, getting like if I had to get really comfortable with talking to my pe the people at work about all this stuff and say telling them about the types of things that I've experienced and my difficulties and you know my boss is really really helpful and great and she's like yeah if you ever need to you know go go for a walk that's fine so like sometimes at the office I just step out for 20 minutes and go for get some fresh air and then come back and that yeah, stuff is yeah. huge um, but it's all awareness, awareness of who I, of what's going on with me, uh, you know, and, and being okay with saying to my, my boss, like, Hey, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed. Do you mind if I take a little break? And they're like, yeah, go ahead. No, mm -hmm. no worries. And then, you know, yeah. go out in my, go out in my car and meditate for 15 minutes. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Let's go back. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> yeah, but that stuff yeah. is huge. And the thing is, is that, uh, before I knew how important that was, I just didn't, I just wasn't doing it. Cause I, I didn't know, I didn't know it should be such a top priority. And here's the thing, like people might be listening to this and be like, Oh, that sounds just like things that are useful for anyone, you know? And it's like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. For, for, for me, I'm like, I, people on the spectrum were so uh, sensitive to everything in our world, literally everything, including our own emotions are, are, we're sensitive to. And mm -hmm. uh, so, for anyone, these things are important. For me, it's like, for like, for example, for someone who is uh, what we call neurotypical, meaning like they have a, you know, whatever normal it looks like. <laughs> Although yeah, we're all yeah. we, we all have our own things, but you know, yeah. but neurotypical individual, these things are important, and it's probably the difference between a great day and a norm and a not so great day, perhaps. But for me, it's like literally the difference between being able to feel and experience life versus feeling amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. like really yeah. important. It's an emphasized mm -hmm. level of importance, I guess. 
So, so that moves us nice on to the last couple of questions, which are, you know, what about when things don't go right? You've already started to talk about that. You've talked about the meditation and sort of going for a walk, stepping out of, of a room. What, what about um, with your own business sort of internally to you? If things have gone wrong on a day, how, how do you deal with that? My changing how I think about things is absolutely huge. Um, and this kind of is now getting into the spiritual realm of things. Um, and I'll tell you this, I, first of all, before I talk about this stuff, I was raised in the Christian church, uh, the fundamentalist church till I was like 17. And then I left cause I stopped believing in a lot of what they were saying. And I have since kind of gone back to the whole spirituality thing, but it's based off my own experiences with it off of very like profound inexplainable things that have happened to me personally, like many times, you know, mm. to the point where I no longer have any doubt. And I'm like, some, you know, I feel like something's going on here. There's some craziness going on that I cannot explain. <laughs> and uh, mm. but that's what I always tell people before I talk about this stuff. It's like, it's like, you have to experience it. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to some YouTube video. Don't listen to some book. Like, exp it, like have these profound experiences and then f get curious and look up what might be going on. Um, but like learning about the law of attraction and experimenting with it and using it and understanding that, that my internal states are what create my outside world and my what I believe and what I act upon in my world is what I will create and kind of mm. having a profound, uh, just changing my thinking. So in other words, to answer how this factors in with uh, when things go wrong, nowadays when things go wrong or not according to plan, I think like, okay, there's a lesson here for me. There's something about this that I have, wa I have created for myself to learn and experience. And yeah. I'm like, okay, there's a lesson here. It's not like, and this is something uh, Louise Hay talks about. Louise Hay has been a big influence on on my thinking in this area. And her book, uh, You Can Heal Your Life, was really uh, life-changing for me, as it has been for many people. And mm -hmm. something she talks about is trying to integrate the belief and, and doing so successfully of the belief of only good lies before me, that whatever happens, whatever is going wrong in my external world, there's, it's impossible for things to go wrong, like or for or for it yeah. to be bad, for it to be bad. Things might go not according to plan, or I, some some issue might come up. But whatever is happening, it's it's working out. It's gonna it's not like it's working out better than I planned, you know. And when yeah. you start to think about things in that respect, you're like, okay, um, there's some external divine force, perhaps, or something is going on here where it might be smarter than me. And maybe the thing that I was thinking was the way forward, the right answer. I was wrong because I you know, I make mistakes and that was the wrong path. And now this is not working out and that's cool because something better is coming. Something better mm -hmm. is, is happening. And, and again, to further emphasize, the reason I believe that is because that has been my experience. I, it's not just like, I'm not just saying this off because I hope that that's what's going to happen. Like, no, that's literally what I seem to ha to experience like time and time and time again, is that that, yeah. is, that is the case. <laughs> and I'm finally, I'm like, okay, I guess that's what's going on around here. And then the more that I believe that way, the more that I start to say, Oh, that was wrong. That didn't work out. But obviously, it's because I'm in, you know, I couldn't fathom the right answer. And the divine forces watching over me, they are hooking me up. And then that that's what happens more and more and more. <laughs> and, uh, and again, I know I'm sounding pretty woo, but it's based off of a few years of having these experiences, not just yeah. off of what I read in some book. No, no. So what about on the flip side then? What about that that day when you've ended the day knowing that you've had the chance to live more? And that's where I talk about getting to do more of the things that you want to do and less of the things that you feel you should do or you have to do. What What's that day look like? It's a day where there's so many of these profound things that I cannot explain when they all seem to be happening a lot. When they seem to be happening, you know, like here's an example. Uh, just the other day, I was... I was kind of setting the intention that 
that like I would be on people's minds more often, not from like a egotistical way, but in like, a, hey, I could use some more clients. I could use a little bit more business, you know, in my life to these days. So I'm thinking, OK, let's get me some referrals, you know, like and I just kind of. I just kind of imagined myself and I was like, what would that look like? Okay. Maybe some people are talking about me more often. Maybe, yeah. maybe some people are telling their friends about the work that I do and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, let's, let's make that happen. That way I can make some new friends. I can meet some new potential clients and just see what happens. And then that was my experience. That was exactly what happened in a freaky way. Like I would walk into a room and people would be like, Hey, we were literally just talking about you and wondering if you were going to show up today. And I was like, yeah, yeah, here, here I am. And then uh, and I got more referrals. I got like three referrals from people who were like, hey, I was just talking about you with so-and-so. They said to talk to you and, and stuff like that. Or one of my friends messaged me and she was like, why have you been in my dreams all week? Like, one of my, like, one of my, <laughs> one of my old friends was like, I've been dreaming about you for the past few days. I don't know why, what we were doing in those dreams, but we were like going on an adventure. It's like, okay, great, sweet. Um, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. And that's just one example of what I'm talking about here where I'm like, okay, this is, this is creepy, but I've gotten used to it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah. and it's been great. It's, and, and not only that, it's exactly what I, what I imagined because again, I'm not trying to say like egotistical talking about how great I am. No, just like my friends were like, Hey, you know, so-and-so said that you could help me out with this problem I'm having or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I absolutely can. And then I can mm -hmm. be of service. You know, I can help. And, uh, that's what life's all about. So for me, having a great day is when these things are all lining up and when I just feel like, wow, this is amazing. What's going on yeah, here? Yeah. I don't I don't understand. But like like yesterday, honestly, was a perfect was a perfect day. And I have no I, I, I think that today is going to be just as perfect. But like yesterday, I was I had phone calls with a bunch of my team and we were like setting up all these deals. Uh, we brought on this new uh, partner who can do some really great websites. And then three hours later, I had a call with a potential client who was like, hey, I need a website. It sounds exactly like the one that this person we just brought on can do. And then I messaged her. I was like, hey, we got work for you like now. She's like, great, awesome. You know what I mean? And uh, and hooked it up. And you know, it just happens and when things are just flowing like that, where it's mm -hmm. like, and then I, and then I finish those calls and I hop on the podcast and I do it and we have a great conversation and I'm like, man, this is great. And then I check my phone and we've got sales coming in on the e-commerce store. And I'm like, wow, this is fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, people. Like, Today's been a good one. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, this is a good day. And then I, that I, you know, I, and I have, so, and I get in this state, this state where I have so much energy. And I'm like, and it's one in the morning and I'm like, wow, I don't have to, I don't want to go to sleep, but I need to, cause I got to wake up soon. <laughs> yeah, like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is, but it's just, when you just feel like, wow, this is uh, I've had so many great conversations today. Things are just flowing. And those, for me, those are the days where I'm like, man, this is, mm -hmm. this is it. And, uh, and again, the way that I've gotten there doing all the stuff that I'm talking about here, but most importantly, like focusing on those strengths, focusing on like, what are you really good at? Like for me is having conversations like this one. This is like my superpower, I guess, is having these conversations. So I'm like, okay, I need to find a way to have these conversations and have it make money for me. So putting together yeah, deals, yeah, yeah, putting yeah. together closing clients, you know, meeting new clients, uh, podcasting, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank well, you, Paul. Thank it's you, been Paul. It's brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Given us loads of resources, and we've talked. We've talked. You know, science. Woo woo. <laughs> we've done. We've done a lot. Brazilian jiu jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even really talk about that. Um, so it's been. It's really been really good having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's been great. Lovely. So tell people how they can find out more about you and connect with you. So if you're on a podcast network, if you enjoy podcasts, which I, I think that people listening to this podcast probably do, you can just look up Beyond Homo Sapien on Stitcher or iTunes or wherever. Um, you can also go to beyondhomosapien.com and uh, also on YouTube, Beyond Homo Sapien is our YouTube channel. And you'll find all the links to connect with me through those mediums. Lovely. Thank you, Paul. Hey, no worries. 
All this information is available in the show notes. If you go to the link powertolivemore.com forward slash, in this case, 94, then you'll be able to see those show notes. And on the newsletter last week, the tool that I shared was uh, Zapier or Zapier, probably Zapier, um, as what you do when you use the tool is create zaps. It's a tool I've been using for a good while and seems to be getting more well known. And it's a tool that enables you to connect up other services, platforms and apps that you use to automate various processes. Automation is part of my fundamental systemize, which enables you to get more done with ease by letting the system take the strain, as they say. To give you an example of how it can be used, when a guest books in for my podcast I have automation set up via Zapier so I can appear professional and the guest gets what they need and the process to publish it is kicked off efficiently so basically the guest clicks on a link and they book in for an interview via a calendar tool called time trade at which point Zapier then adds a meeting into my calendar creates a go-to meeting session for the interview and then also drafts an email with the details and my standard interview questions and that pops into my drafts folder ready to send to the guests to confirm and it makes the process so smooth and much easier for me to administer and actually before I had the automation set up I'd actually procrastinate on asking people to join me on the show because it caused so much admin work to actually get them invited and get everything set up and all that sort of thing which was obviously ridiculous because you know I want to have the podcast uh, uh, you know happening and regular guests and all that sort of thing but actually the process was you know a bit of a, an issue but now I use Zapier to automate so much of it it's actually a real breeze if somebody wants to book onto the show I just send them a link and it all sort of kicks off from there so thoroughly recommend looking at Zapier for automating and connecting up different apps and services that you use to enable you to get stuff done you know automatically behind the scenes without you actually having to do the admin for it a reminder that I'm um, completing a survey at the moment f- aimed at home-based consultants and coaches. So if you're one of those or if you know people who fit that criteria, I'd love for you to send them to powertolivemore.com forward slash survey so that uh, you or they can fill out the questionnaire for me. It's really about what frustrates people about working from home as a home-based consultant or coach and what is, uh, you know, what the good parts of that are and uh, really will help me to put some information together firstly to share which uh, hopefully will be interesting for people but also it's what I'm looking at uh, doing moving forwards how I can support that community so it'd be really good to get some feedback from people within that group so home-based coaches and consultants and as I say if you could send people to powertolivemore.com forward slash survey I'd absolutely really appreciate you doing that and just to clarify again the show notes for this week's show are at powertolivemore.com forward slash 94 and we look forward to speaking to you next week use your power to live more 